Today we're going to review something from the company DJI. And if you've never heard of that company, I'm sure you've seen some of their products like this. I'm sure you've seen this on the news, you've seen maybe you own one or you know someone that has them. This is the Phantom uh, quadcopter UAV or what most people call drones. And they're basically so popular right now. They're selling millions of them. They have for the last couple of years. And what people like doing with them is taking video or stills because you can either, the, the first ones actually you could attach a GoPro to. Then they came out with their own camera and a stabilized uh, system, which is a three axis gimbal which is great for aerial photography. But what they've come up with now is something that you don't have to put in the air, but you can use on the ground. Now using some sort of a stabilizer for photography or videography is not something that's new. They've been doing this for decades in Hollywood using big rigs and vest systems uh, called steady cams. And they were systems where they have a gimbal, but you have to balance it very precisely. And up until now, there's also some handheld gimbals, which uses a three axis gimbal like the Phantom uh, helicopter or quadcopter. But recently that's even changed to electronic gimbals where you have three axis and three different brushless motors that stabilize your video. There's various different companies that make these stabilizers, including DJI as, as well. They make one called the Ronin and a Ronin M, which is a smaller version. Now that is a, a kind of a cage system. You have two hands that you hold on to. And for a lot of people, that might be a little bit overkill. You might not need that, but you still want some stabilized video. Well, this is DJI's latest offering into the handheld gimbal market, and it's called the Osmo. Uh, what's included in the box? Well, here's the nice box here. You get a battery, a charger. Uh, you can get other accessories. We're going to talk about that a little, little bit later. And you get a nice case. And inside this little violin type of case is the Osmo. Here it is right here with a phone uh, holder attached to it. Now this is on a rosette system where you can take this off and you can put different accessories on. Now to get started, we're just going to fold out the phone holder and it is adjustable. Uh, it'll take up to like an iPhone 6 Plus so you can see it extends quite far and we have to unlock the Osmos. There's three axis. There, first of all, let's take off the lens cap and there's one axis. You just twist it, it unlocks, twist forward, and here there is a switch on the back, and now you can see that the camera is fully independent and can move in all directions. Now let's talk about the camera. Uh, it shoots 4K video and up to 120 frames a second for uh, slow motion, really nice, and it also has a nice good 12 megapixel camera. So we're going to turn it on here and you can see it's gonna initialize and it's gonna face forward and we're ready to go. All we have to do, you don't have to use a phone, but of course, uh, by using your phone, you can view what you're watching. And on their app, you can change a lot of things. You can run it fully automatic or manual. You can change your ISO, you can change your shutter speed and white balance, things like that. So it's really handy. It's a great app. We're gonna to get to that in a little bit later too. So you take your phone, you put it on like so, and now you have the Osmos ready to go. And you, basically it's Wi-Fi as well. You don't have to have the phone connected to it. Uh, if you wanted to, you could control the Osmos far away, you know, so uh, you can work as a remote system as well. So I'm just gonna attach it here for now. And as you can see, uh, it's already stabilized ready. As soon as we turned it on and if we move back and forth, you can see the camera is staying level. Very similar to what the quadcopter does as well. Uh, we go back and forth all around and it's maintaining a nice stable view, which is perfect for doing video and actually doing stills, especially for low light uh, when you have a little bit of jitter, if your hands are shaking, things like this. It's as you can actually hold it still as still as you can that gimbal is going to really help you get a better shot in low light. Now before I get into the good, the bad and the ugly of the Osmo, let's get into a few samples which I'm sure you're dying to see. Now the Osmo will kick up your production value on any production, whether you're an event videographer or photographer or just a hobbyist or you just want to make good home videos that don't have that shakiness to it. 
Here you can see that it provides a great platform for getting some video of kids. And you know they're always moving around so you can move with them and your viewers are not gonna get sick of this rocky motion. Also great for taking on vacations and holidays and it's always a welcome sight to use it in the kitchen where we are uh, when you have a lot of friends and family over. It's just fun walking around and everyone really has a blast with it. On this example, I use it to film a review for the 2016 Toyota RAV4 review. And here you can see I'm actually uh, doing a walk around with a friend of mine from Motormouth Canada. And we're doing a walk around. You can see it's a very fluid motion. Uh, it does take a little bit of practice, but the results are definitely worth it. Now this is impressive. Here we do a car to car with the Toyota RAV4 and you can see the car that I'm in. I'm actually just hand holding this Osmo. You can see sometimes the car that I'm in comes into frame and you can see how shaky or bumpy this road is. And look at the suspension of the RAV4, how it's articulating. This is not a smooth road yet. Look at the footage and this is 100% not stabilized in post. This is just from the Osmo. So this is really impressive. Now I'm sure when you get your Osmo, you're gonna walk around everywhere with it. You're gonna be on the streets, in the market, uh, in the kitchen, you name it. And it's a lot of fun, like I said. But one of the things that it's really handy for also is not just for its movement type of stability. It's great for just holding it still, like I said, for low light shots, but even as a camera, it's a great stabilizer to take a picture just like that. But this also has a joystick so you can move the actual head and it's a nice smooth pan or you can do a tilt as well. Now one thing to note, the joystick only does pan and tilt either or at the same time. But you can use a DJ app, all you have to do is put your thumb or your finger onto the screen and you can move the gimbal however you want. Doesn't matter what angle so you can go up and to the left at the same time. And I hope that they actually change that. Maybe it's a firmware thing. They can change that in the, in the future for the joystick. But here you can see that I can pan around, get a nice smooth pan of this Christmas festival. Or here in an airline review, I can just stick the Osmo up and do a nice pan of the interior of this airplane. And the nice thing about it, I don't have to stand up and, and pan around. So it's very discreet. So what do I like about the Osmo? Well, number one, the video quality for what you get is actually quite good. Uh, it shoots 4K, like I said, and even slow motion video. Of course, it's not gonna be the best camera for low light, but for something that you're holding in your hand and you can stick out a window and get amazing results, it's more than adequate. Next thing I like about the Osmo is the app, the DJI app is very good for the Osmo. You can do a lot of things. You can switch from a video to photo. I didn't mention, but you can do panoramic uh, photos and panoramic selfies with the Osmo as well. Uh, that's one thing I didn't really get into a lot of, and I don't do a lot of selfies, but uh, if you do, you know, check that out. But the app itself, uh, it's very, very intuitive, easy to use, and there's even an editing uh, software in it really fun to use, which you can do it from your phone. You can edit up a 30 second video, a little highlight thing, and just kind of throw it up onto social media or share with your friends right away. It's super easy and it's actually kind of fun. Now, third thing is the case. Uh, I'm just surprised, first of all, that you get a case, period. But this case is actually quite good quality. I've used it quite a bit. And I should mention, I've owned this Osmo for about two months now. And I, <clears throat> I didn't want to rush into the review because I really wanted to use it and get some samples uh, to show you and also just feel it out before I gave you my final thoughts. Uh, anyways, the case, really good. Uh, it's very well built. The zippers are quite rugged and uh, it's not that really thin stuff. And it's padded. It's padded on the bottom and the top, and it's nice and recessed. Now, it'd be nice if you get other accessories. There's not a lot of room in this case to put anything else, but uh, it's pretty good, uh, especially for free. And the last thing I like about the Osmo is 
price. I think it's actually a good value. $650 for what you see uh, here. You get the case, like I said, you get a battery charger, uh, you get you know the nice box. But anyway, $650, you're thinking, oh, that's a lot of money. Well, there are other three axis gimbal uh, stabilizers systems out there and you're looking probably around about $300 at least. Now those ones don't come with the camera. Uh, so you have to supply your own camera, mainly usually a GoPro. Now a GoPro that's gonna shoot 4K is gonna run you about four or $500, depending where you live. And you add that to the price of the gimbal and you're at seven or $800. So you're actually more than what the Osmo is. And you don't have the great app and the form function that you have with this Osmo. Now we've had the good, let's hear the bad. Uh, what do I think that's bad on the Osmo or what could be improved? Well, we talked about the case. I really, that was one of my likes. I like this case, but here is my problem. I'm gonna turn this off for a second here. And we're just gonna put this away. And by putting it away, you actually wanna lock. It clicks there, clicks. And now that is locked in now. It's not gonna move. And so here's the case. We said that we like the case. Now this is what I don't like about the case. First of all, you're gonna put it in here, you can strap it in. It's actually very nice and great, great zippers. Now you have also a shoulder strap, it's adjustable and you can carry this. Now, whether you're an event videographer or you just wanna go and, and uh, videotape your kids at Disneyland or the amusement park or wherever, you wanna carry the Osmo with you, of course. Uh, if you want it to act like a point and shoot type of camera, it's not gonna happen because you have to take it out first of all and you have to uh, sync it with your app. There is actually a sleep mode with it that actually minimizes that time. But here's what I don't like about the case. If I were to use this like a regular camera case, normally I would open it from the top and I would take my camera out. This opens the hinges at the back. So when you open it up, there's your Osmo here, and it can, you know, of course, there are straps in here, but uh, you know, uh, when you're re doing something really quick, you know, this could fall out. But it'd be really nice if the Osmo would actually uh, open from the other side, so you would actually not have that happen. So here's my solution here. First of all, I wish that they actually had more attachments on here, so you could put, uh, let's say, a. Uh, a shoulder strap onto the Os Osmo itself and you can hang it yourself. But since they don't, my solution is they do have a little wrist strap that you can put through this area here. But instead of the wrist strap, I put this key ring. Now with the key ring and when it's locked, I can take, I have a lanyard here. I have a lanyard and this is a lockable one. You can get these at outdoor shops and I can click that to my lanyard. I could go and clip it on to my belt. I'll just see if, see if you can see that here, like this. And I can walk around and that's gonna be a lot easier. I can grab it like this and just open it up and it's ready to go. So that's my solution there, but I wish that they could do something with either some more attachment points on the Osmo itself or on the case. You know, it's a small thing, but a lot of people are gonna be using it for doing home videos. Or even as a regular photographer, if you have other cameras in your hand, it'd be nice to have this one hanging off you and ready to go when you need it, just like this. That's it, nice quick draw. Now the next thing that I don't like about the Osmo is also a positive. First of all, there is audio that is taken from the, the Osmo. There is a small microphone built in and there is an audio in, which is a big plus. You can actually put your own microphone in, but let me tell you what I don't like. First of all, uh, let's just take the audio from the onboard mic right now. I'm gonna record a little bit of audio. We're gonna hit record right here. here. Now we are talking into the Osmo, recording into the Osmo. This is the microphone built in uh, to the handle area of the camera and um, there is a word, there is a fan that, that actually operates most of the time when you're using the Osmo. And if you're trying to get real critical um, audio, it's not gonna happen with the onboard mic, of course. So you're gonna have to get a separate microphone and attach that to the Osmo and put that in 
to the microphone in. Now, how good is this audio? Well, obviously there is audio there, but uh, like I said, anything critical, you're definitely not gonna use this audio. So let's hook a microphone up to it and see what that's like now. Okay, so now we have a Sennheiser uh, wireless mic pack attached to the Osmo and this is the audio coming directly from this microphone. So now you can hear the difference between the onboard mic and a separate microphone. Obviously, uh, a huge advantage using a separate microphone as you can hear. Now the disadvantage, well there's no disadvantage, but there is a, a couple of things to be aware of is there are no audio levels on the app for your levels. So you cannot adjust your levels uh, for your audio. So make sure, you know, you might be a little bit hot. Uh, you have to adjust it in your pack or in, if your microphone has an adjustment, you have to do it there. Otherwise, you're gonna be at the mercy of some sort of an automatic gain control built into the Osmo here. Uh, second thing, there's no headphone out, so you can't monitor the audio either. So if you're uh, planning on trying to do an interview or something like this, you can't hear what uh, what's going on until you listen to it afterwards so you're kind of like flying blind or deaf uh, so that is your example there now this is the microphone is attached right now to this holder this and this is an accessory holder from DJI and uh, as you can see it, it has it has um, has two different uh, holders and different slots or holes you can attach different things to. It's not really big. Now the disadvantage of this holder for me though is it only has the disadvantage of this over now the disadvantage though of this holder is once you attach it to this rosette mount here you can't attach your phone holder anymore. So right now I'm looking at the my screen for video here. I'm actually looking here and now you can see that uh, I have my DJI app running in the background here, but I can't see it right with, with this. So if I was moving around, I would uh, basically have to hold this as well. And um, so that's not the greatest thing, but at least it does have an accessory holder. Now, that brings me to my next dislike is, uh, first of all, I ordered this DJI Osmo uh, about two weeks after it was released. And uh, I ordered it with an extra battery and also some accessories. Well, first of all, the battery life on the Osmo, they state it's about one hour. It is barely one hour. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, I get, I've gotten a lot lower than one hour. And you definitely need more than one battery. So do yourself a favor, order some extra batteries. Um, now, on the accessory side, though, I ordered the Osmo. I got it in. One month later, I didn't get the bat, my extra battery or my holder for another month after that. That's two months. So uh, on a something like this that has such limited battery life, and they knew that. I'm really disappointed. I think they really should have stocked up on the batteries instead of just shipping all these things out, and you can't really use it very much because you need extra batteries. Now, I also ordered an uh, extension stick, which is very handy, and a car mount to, to do some car videography. Those were ordered at the same time, and it's coming up. It's going to be three months pretty soon, and I still have not received those. So that's not a great thing. That's not great for customer service in that respect. Um, paid for the items and still haven't got them. Uh, three, almost three months. So, uh, you know... That's nothing to do with the quality of the product, but that's something to do with the way that this company runs. Do you need an Osmo? Well, put it this way. Just a decade ago, you would have to spend thousands of dollars on some sort of a stabilized camera system, and that didn't even include a 4K camera. It even, didn't even come with ca any camera at all. And it would take you hundreds of hours of practice to actually get that smooth shot and you'd have to tinker it to balance it and things like that. Now with technology, you get these great three axis motorized gimbals that they're pretty well ready to go out of the box. Now, to keep this in mind though, you're gonna get better results than you didn't 
uh, without using one of these stabilizers. But to get optimal results, you still need to practice. Uh, there's different ways to walk or different ways to move. And the more you use it, the better you're gonna get. There's a lot of tutorials on the web that'll show you uh, little tips and tricks, how to walk, things like that. You can go to even DJI.com for that. But uh, for the fact that you can get similar Hollywood production shots for under 650 bucks, I think it's a no-brainer.